many testimonies and some glorious and some rather basic. Well, to mine, I would say, I am not born an Israelite, not by birth. I am not of the original twelve tribes. Instead, I was born again and grafted in, and if it wasn't for Jesus, I would just be among the heathen. I wouldn't be anything. Just uh, another tribe to war with. Just another reprobate mind. Another carnal beast roaming the world. Just another sinner. I wouldn't be what Christ has made me to be. I would not be preaching for him. I would not be acting in the office of the apostle. Or the teacher, or the pastor, or evangelist, or prophet as necessary. Me, I, I was born with a family that was not doctrinally minded, not attached to some denomination, but everybody believed, well, everybody believed in the idea that there is a God, and they knew, they all knew about the Bible, and not all of them read it, but maybe read a a verse or a, a bit, read a chapter every now and then, that sort of thing. And my mother wanting to saturate my life with Bible centered things. Like, if we're going to do homeschool, we're going to do a Bible centered homeschool, which I like. And my father doing, doing that with him. <coughs> uh, same deal, if I, I'm uh, Bible-centered, uh, we're going to be about Jesus and God and all. I uh, talked to my uh, grandmother on my mother's side, and as I recall it, her grandfather, um, had read the whole Bible. Made made a habit of things. I think he uh, prayed in the morning or something. But yeah, he got some. And I'm. It was. I believe it was her. Her grandfather, not her father. So you know, her grandfather. And um, like he'd get up before everybody else, make them food, and then they'd all go to work. So you had him um. And it was something he did every morning before they got up. And But yeah, I remember it being that he had read the entire Bible. All 66 books. And either he would read it in the morning before everyone got up. Or he would pray in the morning before everyone got up. So that there's that foundation in that. My uh, mother's parents... Uh, the ones I'm talking about, my grand, the grandmother I just talking about, uh, well, her and my grandfather and my, my maternal grandparents, they used to attend the church, and I don't know about the, well, I mean, it, it, you know, everybody would attend some sort of church at some point, and um, one of the churches, well, I believe it's the last church they would regularly go to down the road from them. Like, you know, walking distance. And, um, well, they were there. They were being involved in the church. And then the church started getting weird with it. They wanted my grandfather to start teaching sex education. And 
they were saying that he was called for it and God was not telling him that he was called for it so they were trying to put him in a compromised position which was not the will of God and so they left that church and my understanding is that was the last church they ever regularly <laughs> attended and um my father's parents I don't know when they actually like the last time they were regularly going to a church but I know that they've been heavily involved in church like about being a musician and uh, being a um the Sunday school teachers stuff stuff like that they've been being involved in the church stuff uh, so maybe a bit more doctrinal on their side of thinking whatever way of thinking that is and the, the main idea that I'm giving with all this is I am not well I am non-denominational I've never been a part of a denomination not by my lineage not by my inheritance I'm not I don't have a legacy of these people were Baptist or these people were Pentecostal or these people were Catholic I, I don't I mean, maybe at some point somebody was, but in the more immediate spectrum, no, just non-denominational. Uh, used to, I mean, that's like my my parents and me. Um, well, my parents, I, my, my parents, me, my my sister. Um, at the time, I only had one sister. We went to a church that they uh, that my parents had gotten married in, or that my yeah my parents were married in. And, um, we would go there regularly, and I didn't like the Sunday school because I wasn't learning anything, which, that's a bad school when you're not learning anything. Um, and, uh, but I, and being in the, uh, the sanctuary, or being in the room where everyone was going and, uh, like, listening to the preacher, I was, I liked that a bit more. And I like the other activities where, like, we'd be special events and stuff, uh, which that may have, uh, been less when I was there, but something like that. And, um, so yeah, we went there for a while, and then we stopped, and, um, I don't recall why we stopped, maybe moved to a different location or something. I mean, always in the same area, but just difference of house, um. Maybe you know, different minutes to get there, and um, then after that, my mother wanted to go to another church, a bigger church, um, and they they were Holy Ghost speaking stuff like that, stuff that's very foreign to me. So I mean, going in there, I just I didn't like the environment because it was way too big, and it wasn't. They weren't reserved about things. They were very open about things. They would like praising hands and um, well, raising hands to praise and stuff that was uncomfortable to me because it was foreign. I, I didn't didn't like it because I was more of a carnal mind at the time instead of a spiritual mind. And then uh, I would I started attending a church with my father. Um, that was a lot more reserved, like I was looking for, and, um, and when my mother and my sister, at this time I had, had two sisters, which I still do, but, um, my, at this time my mother and my sisters, uh, well, they would, they would go there with us, and I didn't like that, I didn't like having my mother, I didn't, uh, having my mother there, I didn't like having... It was particularly my mother, but I didn't like having my sisters there either. I just wanted it to be me and my dad going in, um, because, uh, you know, family dynamics and how some people annoy you, that sort of thing. Um, so petty stuff. And, uh, so they, they didn't go with us, and I did go to this, I guess they'd go to the other church, and I, uh, I would go with my dad there, and you know, it was reserved, we were still getting preached to, but I realized later on that that reservedness wasn't actually a good thing, and the church that my mother was going to, well, 
I started going to on again, off again, and then more regularly I started going and even got to the place of volunteering there, going to the parking lot. And, well, I'm still, that that's the, st that's the place I'm at right now where I do the parking lot to volunteer. I'll be a greeter as I've, I've been, I've done greeting before. I've done, um, I've done security for a special event. It's, uh, I've, I've gotten to be more involved and I've, I mean, I testified to this before about churches, how if you find a church that gets it 90%, it right 90% of the time, you have a good church. And obviously that 90% needs to include who our savior is and that he was raised from the dead and but you know, the whole who is Jesus thing. And if they have who Jesus is is right and um that he's the only access point to heaven, then yeah, that's the biggest thing. And then when they have the other eighty nine percent or whatever amount there that's right, then yeah, that's a good church. They may do some um church politics thing every now and then that's like just a publicity scheme instead of actually having any real meaning you know not let a god let of profit margins or something or that sort of thing anyways um yeah um, and to this point i'm still well i mean i listen to jesse duplantis and he well he's all he's all things to all people so i mean I look at it more in that light because I because I am of a, a non-denominational background. I do look at it more as a I'm I will be all things to all people because I'm more useful to God that way. Um, I mean that's like Jesus; He was all things to all people. If I'm going I can be a Catholic to a Catholic. I can be a Pentecostal to a Pentecostal. I, I a Baptist to a Baptist because why wouldn't I be? We're all a part of the same body of Christ. I mean. My minister is Jesus, chiefly, and because he's my shepherd. I don't have a pastor as my shepherd. No, Jesus is my shepherd. And I, um, there's the other side. Of, yeah, my, uh, my, my, uh, body of Christ is the entire body of Christ. Catholics included, um, what, uh, where are they, the, um, Southern Baptist included, even though, I mean, that's like, what, what was it, um, the, uh, the, the Church of Jesus, the, day, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints included, because if you're, if you recognize Jesus, you are a part of my family, you may get some stuff wrong in your, uh, doctrinal thinking, but I, I'm, I'm just not gonna believe that way, so what, I mean, I, but I am gonna believe with you on Jesus is Jesus. That that's the um, we'll we'll have contention about whatever other thing like uh whether or not you can be perfect but um if you agree with if we agreed together that Jesus is Jesus then you're my family you are a part of my body of Christ my body of Christ is not limited to uh evangelical or something like that it's everybody. If you recognize Jesus, you are mine and I am yours. We're not divided. I mean, why would we be? Why would I go and say, okay, I'm not going to use this arm anymore. Instead, I, I, this is this is me. No, I, I want this arm too. And I want my feet. And I, I, I want all of it. I want my whole body to function. And I, I recognize that this flesh body that I am in right now, that this spirit is in right now. I want full dominion over it. I don't want to just say, okay, I'm not going to use this finger because it offended me. That's stupid. I'm not going to use... No, I, I'm going to use all the fingers. I'm going to use the, the thumbs. I'm going to use the hands, uh, the palms. I'm, I'll use the entire body. Even to the place of, okay, be married, make a baby, and then raise them up as to be like Christ. Like... I should be being like Christ that to um know that first uh first Corinthians ten thirteen you don't have to sin you don't you do not have to sin you've never had to sin without Christ you have sinned sure 
you sinned. But once you're forgiven by Christ, you are a new creature, no longer bound by sin. So that that flesh body that heads that you know that's still in sin, you're not that flesh body. You're the spirit dwelling in that flesh body. So you, the spirit, the soul, has not sinned when the soul is forgiven. <laughs> because how can you be free from sin if you're still sinning? It makes no sense. You have to. God, to God, for God to say that you are freed from sin, that those who are dead are freed from sin, as in we are dead and, and that we are reborn. The old man is dead. The old man died to sin, but the new man is alive because of Christ. And you know, people can screw it up and okay, I'm going to well, sin again after the born again part, but no, you just, it's like making out with a corpse. You're not. It's not the new you that's sinning, it's the old you. You hadn't fully been born again. That's all. That's like, I, I've been sinning lately. And I hadn't been for a while. And I'm, I'm not going to continue in it because I've, already, I've read the word. You, you don't have to sin. It was, uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Uh, no, there's there hath no temptation taken you. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll paraphrase it, or I'll get what closest I can get. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way that she may be a way to escape it, that she may be able to bear it. I do not have to sin. I do not have to live in sin. I do not have to be a sinner. Galatians 5.16 This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I had been fulfilling the lust of the flesh for like the last few days, which I hadn't been doing before that point. And I don't have to. I ju I'll just go back to walking in the Spirit. I just go and walk in the spirit, and then I won't be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. I won't be sinning. You know the thing? It, take your thoughts captive. I, I can do that. I can, okay, a thought of pornography comes in there. Nope, taking that captive, tossing it out. Then it's gone. Now, now I'm thinking about YouTube or something. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about um, making Christ-centered videos. I don't have to live in sin. I live in Christ. Christ lives in me. Why, why would... You can't, if you have Christ living in you, why would you ever live in sin? I can do all things through Christ that would strengthen us. I mean, that's Philippians, letter of Philipp, uh, in the letter of Philippians. Uh, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Let no man say when he is tempted, for I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. And when lust has conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And when sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's the book of James. So no, I'm not going to live in sin. Why would I do that? I, I know Christ. I've, I've read his books. I believe him. I love God. I, I, I love the I love the Bible. I, I don't love masturbation. I don't love pornography. I don't love sin. The flesh may love sin, but I don't. So why would I continue any uh, continue any any longer? Right? That's like uh, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that uh, to to obey its lust thereof. It, I'm paraphrasing some of that, but yeah, that's Book of Romans. Um, he that is dead is freed from sin. Also the book of Romans. Be therefore holy for I am holy at Leviticus. Be therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. Uh, that's Matthew. Mark 30. Wait, uh, I got Mark 11.
11.30. Love, <laughs> love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy heart. With all that, with all that heart, with all that soul, with all that strength, with, with all that mind, and I, I mean strength, I believe is after, but you, you know that whole thing. This is the first. This is the greatest commandment. If I love God with everything, if I love God with all this, all of me, I don't have to sin. I love God. I don't love sin. You can't love both. Uh, you cannot love God and Mammon. You can only love one. If it, you will, you will only obey one master. You can either obey good or you can obey evil. If you obey evil, then you're gonna hate good. If you obey good, then you're gonna hate evil. I hate evil. It's reprehensible. It's not for me. I hate the spirit of error. I love the spirit of truth. I may have been dwelling in sin for the past few days, going and like, um. Going and watching pornography, stuff like that, and well, not not stuff like that, just that. Watching pornography and masturbating to it. I may have been doing that for the past few days, but I'm not going to continue in it because that's not me. I made the choice though. I decided to do that of my own will because of pressures coming in, things that I didn't like going on. And instead of going to praise music like I had been doing, which was, which I, even then, that it would have just stopped it. It would just, gone. Take the thought captive, gone. The joy of the Lord is my strength, not the joy of the world. So yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not continuing in sin. Why would I? It just... I mean, that's the thing. I may have been doing that for the past few days, but I don't have an easy time doing that. It's not like, oh, well, I just go do that. No, that's not a habit for me anymore. It's become to the place, it's got, gone to the place where, really? Am I, re like, it's, it's like you got to make yourself do it. It's like, but why would I do that? And... Either way, I know the formula of how not to do that. And I'll just follow the formula and not do it. Because why would I do that? I mean, that's like you listen to music. Fill your head with songs about Christ and you'll always be thinking about Christ. Fill your uh, mind with words from the Bible and you'll always be thinking about words from the Bible and the wisdom and knowledge and understanding from the Bible instead of from the world. I mean, you fill yourself with all this world junk course you're going to be thinking about world junk you fill your mind with stuff about and not preachers i'm saying the bible and then if a preacher is quoting the bible that's different and if what they're actually saying is from the bible not motivational speakers who cares about motivational speakers i'm talking philippians galatians ephesians matthew mark luke john um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Judge, D D Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 <laughs> Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, and Ezra's in there somewhere too, maybe after that, um, no, he is after that, because I know he's not before that, because I, I got that lineup right, but yeah, I mean, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then Galatians is after that, uh, Galatians, I believe it's in the, uh, Ephesians, then Philippians, all the way to Revelation, well, I mean, you know, like, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude, Revelation. <coughs> if you want to live without sin, 
the number one thing to understand is love. Because, I mean, in the Bible, it mentions it multiple times, particularly in the New Testament. If you hate somebody, if you hate one of God's children, if you hate another person, another person in a body like this, and I'm not saying the color of it, I'm saying just a body like this. Um, you know, a human body, someone with a human body, if you hate another person in a human body, you will always be in sin because you have not accepted the first fundamental rule of Christ. Forgiven, you will be forgiven. Christ cannot forgive you if you will not forgive others. If you have unforgiveness in your heart, you cannot be without sin because unforgiveness is sin. 